All right, you guys asked for it repeatedly on my Walking Dead review, guys. So this video, let's break down the season six trailer just released by HBO. This isn't going to be as in depth as I would like it to be because I would need a few days to think about the trailer first. So this is kind of just my initial thoughts on the trailer and things that popped out to me. The trailer started with Jon Snow, so that is where I'm going to start, and then I'm just going to work through by character or region. So we see Jon Snow bleeding out in the snow, and he's very dead. Davos's voice says, he's gone. And he could be referring to either Stannis or Jon Snow in saying that he's gone. It's more likely he's referring to Jon Snow, though, in my opinion. Someone puts their hand over John's eyes, and it looks like a male with male clothing, so it isn't Mel. My initial thought when I saw this was, oh, it's Mel resurrecting him, but that, that definitely wasn't Mel's hand or her clothing. We also see that Mel is breaking down, realizing that her visions were wrong, and admitting that to Davos. Honestly, kind of side note for there, I don't think her visions were exactly wrong. She's notorious for misinterpreting her visions, and I think that she did see a Bolton victory, but it's a Bolton victory that's going to... a victory against them. That's going to happen this season, and it's probably going to involve Jon Snow curb stomping some people. So I think her vision will come true, but not in the way she thought it was going to be. All right, the juicy stuff. Thorn and some Night's Watch men were chopping through a door, which I will get to in a little bit. We also see Davos standing in a room with a dead Jon Snow, Jon Snow's dire wolf ghost that appears to be guarding his corpse, and some other Night's Watch men. Davos says, I've never been much of a fighter. Apologies for what you're about to see. So this is my take on that scene. I believe that Davos is with some loyal Night's Watch people, at least loyal to Jon, and they are all in that room guarding Jon Snow's corpse, and that Jon's direwolf ghost is very much alive. I saw him breathing. That could have been the special effects making it look like that, but I'm 98% sure that Ghost isn't dead, and he's doing what dogs do. They they mourn when their master dies. And so they're all in this room, and then we see earlier in the trailer Thorn and some Night's Watchmen chopping down a door. And I think the door they're chopping down is getting to Jon Snow in that room that they're all in. And when Davos says, I've never been much of a fighter, so apologies for what you're about to see, and he pulls out his sword, which is Longclaw, which is actually Jon's sword. And I don't know why I got so excited seeing Davos with that sword, but sorry. So. He pulls it out, and the rest of the men aren't pulling it out to fight him. They're pulling it out as in a, yeah, fuck yeah, let's go. We're going to protect the corpse, Jon Snow, while Mel resurrects him from the not loyal Night's Watch people that are trying to burst in and get his body and just be done with it. Whether that's burning or chopping off his head or whatever to make sure he doesn't come back to life, even as a, a white. So that's my thoughts on the, the wall and with Jon Snow. And I actually have one more thing about Jon Snow about actually seeing him alive in this trailer, and I'm going to talk about that when I talk about the Boltons and Winterfell. All right, on to the Lannisters. We see the Martell ship arriving in King's Landing with Jaime Lannister and what we're assuming from the teaser pictures, a very dead Marcella. And Jaime makes a promise to Cersei that they're going to take back everything that was taken from them and more, which in itself is juicy because we're going to see a lot of fighting between the Faith and the Crown. Then we see this awesome moment. Lancel Lannister tells Cersei to have her champion step aside or there will be violence. Cersei chooses violence. Clegane Bowl, get hype. It is happening. If you don't understand that, I'm releasing a Game of Thrones news video. I don't know if I'm going to release it before or after this, but watch that. It's happening. Robert Strong looks so awesome. I am. I'm too excited. This. I can't wait anymore. I'm I'm building a time machine, damn it. Marjorie appears to be asking for forgiveness from the Sparrow, and the Sparrow is ready to screw some things up in King's Landing, which is going to be met by with resistance. Love the Crown's guards at the bottom of the Faith steps. I know it was pretty much confirmed already, but we are definitely getting a Tower of Joy flashback scene, and I think how we're going to get it still is through one of Bran's visions when Blood Raven is informing him about some things that are going on and about to go down. So we see men in northern armor approach and pull out their swords. There is a man that looks very much so like Ned Stark. 
The only downside to this is there's only six of them, so I'm hoping Holland Reed is hiding somewhere ready to shoot some poison darts. We saw what I'm assuming a Kingsguard facing off against some of the Northern men. That is most likely Arthur Dane, Sword of the Morning, even though he's dual wielding. The sword on the left sort of looks white like Dawn, but I imagine Dawn is a lot bigger, so I don't know. There could be tons of reasons why this guy is dual wielding swords though, and it doesn't have to be Arthur Dane. Seeing this just further confirms to me that Jon Snow is coming back. What is the point of a Tower of Joy flashback at this point if Ned's dead and Jon's dead? I, if you honestly have a reason for it, why would we, as even as show watchers, you know they cut a lot of shit out of the show from the books. So if John's gone and Ned's gone and neither of them are coming back, what's the point of this flashback? Especially for a show that has 10 episodes and very limited time. I'm very rarely that aggressive with A Song of Ice and Fire stuff. I apologize. We also see another vision or the first vision if you don't believe the Tower of Joy scene was a vision but instead a flashback by a character. Bran is walking around and he looks around and then an other appears, the Night's King. Thoughts on this? I actually do think this is a vision. I think the Tower of Joy is a vision too from Bran, but it could be a flashback. But I think this vision is Blood Raven trying to show Bran what he's doing up there, why it was so important that Jojen got him to Beyond the Wall and to Blood Raven. There's the Night's King, there's the others, there, there's Whites. This is why I need you, you need to stay here, we need to help the, the realm of men. It's iffy whether the Night's King was looking right at Bran or not. If he is, it could mean the Night's King was actually interrupting one of Bran's visions. And this isn't Blood Raven showing him the Night's King, but the Night King showing himself to Bran. Next we got King's Moot, and I'm trying not to yell that, so this is probably going to be really bad audio. I'm sorry, I, I, I need to re-record that line and sell down a little bit. Next we got King's Moot, and I'm so excited. We see it going on where Euron is likely being picked to be the next king. Not sure why he doesn't have an eye patch, but holy hell, he looks just like Theon. Great casting for Theon's nuncle. We also see who I think is Damp Hair. I'm hoping at least. And it looks like Euron was on a bridge, which means we might get to see Balon die. Finally. Sansa, for the most part, looks safe. I'm not sure what to make of Winterfell. Ramsay definitely looked a little surprised when he turned to see Roos. The Bolton army was facing off against another army, which most likely means the Boltons still need to hold Winterfell. The man they were burning most likely wasn't Stannis. If Brienne killed him, as we were led to believe, he'd be missing a head. But we didn't see her take off his head, so that's an unknown. Speaking of that, Brienne was slitting some throats out in the woods. Either she is trying to escape from an area, or had some doubts about killing Stannis and is now helping him escape. This could be why the Boltons are burning a body. Stannis got away, and they are pretending like they got him and took him out. Tyrion appears to be where Daenerys had her dragons chained up, as if he's looking for them. Then we see a dragon fly overhead, which makes me believe that's what they want us to think. He's also telling someone they're in the game now. Who is he talking to? Daenerys is with the Dothraki. It isn't a surprise. We knew where they were taking her. But we did get to see a little bit of their awesome horse gate, so that was pretty cool. Somehow Jorah, the explorer, found the ring Daenerys had dropped in episode 10 of last season, which is pretty amazing to find, and I'm just gonna let that one go. Here is my final crazy thought on this trailer. I swear to you, I spotted Jon Snow riding on a horse into battle. Look at this picture. I'm wondering if the Bolton army is facing off against wildlings and others loyal to Jon after he comes back. No way Jon stays at the wall. Don't tell me I'm wrong. I could spot his glorious hair from a mile away. All right, those are my initial thoughts on this trailer. There is probably tons more to dissect. You have tons more questions probably, or things you noticed. If you want, I can do a Q&A video for this trailer. Just put your questions below, put your thoughts, go crazy, freak out. We are almost at season six. We can do this. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. And come back every week for Game of Thrones videos, comic videos, Star Wars videos, and just videos in general. Videos everywhere.